1950 Grey Cup Championship was played in Toronto's Varsity Stadium before the largest crowd in the history of Canadian football. 27,050 looked on to break the 1949 record of 21,000. The difference was supplied by the extra space in the enlarged and remodeled Varsity Stadium. But even with the extra seats, the demand for tickets was as great as ever. Many 1950 customers recalled the weather conditions of the previous year. Montreal's Freddie Kiak found out for himself as Montreal Alouettes defeated Calgary on a gridiron covered with snow and ice. An added snowfall on the eve of that game left a slippery, partially frozen turf. Footing, to say the least, was treacherous. But those who thought the 1949 conditions were bad didn't know what really bad conditions were. While 1950 brought more customers, it also brought much more mud. A heavy fall of snow and an unexpected thaw the morning of the game left a sloshy field of mud, water, and slush. The 1950 finalists, Toronto Argonauts and Winnipeg Blue Bombers, played on one of the worst fields in history. The Bombers came from Winnipeg with the reputation of being the strongest Western contender of all time. As they warmed up with the wet, muddy ball, Eastern eyes look with interest at the highly rated Winnipeg quarterback, 31-year-old Indian Jack Jacobs, former Green Bay Packers professional. In his first year of Canadian football, the top choice for all Canadian quarterbacks. Under coach Butch Larson, former All-American end with Minnesota, Bombers rose from last place in 1949 to Western champions in 1950. Their key men included Buddy Tinsley, former Green Bay tackle, and Speedy Tom Casey, another ex-pro and a sensation with Hamilton Wildcats the previous year. These Bombers dominated Western football from the start of their season to their triumph in the final against Edmonton. In this play, it was Jacobs to Strappa to Ford, for a Winnipeg touchdown as they won the Western Canadian title. Opposing them are the Eastern Cinderella team. A poor third in 1949's Big Four race, Eastern champions in 1950. Toronto Argonauts completely reorganized between seasons, but some of the old team remained, including veteran Joe Crow, one of the game's finest kickers. Studious Frank Clare came to Toronto from Buffalo University to coach the revamped 1950 Argonauts. Cornell star Al Dechtebrun, former pro with New York Yankees, joined Argos from Hamilton Wildcats to become the Toronto quarterback. And with Dechtebrun the key man, the Argos built a powerful offensive that won them the Eastern title. Under the new order, the old Argo wing formation that won them Grey Cups in 1945, 46 and 47, but failed in 48 and 49, was tossed up. They switched to the currently popular T formation and they combined deception with speed as Frank Clare put together their 1950 powerhouse which beat out Ottawa and Montreal for the second playoff berth. Argos also broke a long-standing tradition and introduced United States imports to their lineup. Americans such as hard-running Ulysses Curtis provided much of the power in their highly respected and versatile offensive. In the Big Four playoff, Argos met the powerful Hamilton Tiger Cats, who finished the regular season in first place. In the first game in Hamilton, the Tiger Cats rang up a two-point margin to carry over on the round. Here, early in the second game, a short deck to run pass to end Stretch Whaley put Toronto in the lead. The accurate Toronto-born Nick Volpe added to the margin with a perfectly kicked field goal from a difficult angle. Then, Deck de Brun threw another pass. This one to former Toronto Varsity star Ted Tugut. It was the second Argo touchdown, and Scholars ran up an overwhelming lead against the desperate Hamilton Tiger Cats. The final Toronto touchdown was scored by Bob Westlake, mid-season replacement for Billy Bass, who was out with a broken back. Westlake ran around left end with a great burst of speed and went 33 yards, and Toronto won the two-game total point final 35 to 19. And so Toronto Argonauts, Eastern champions, 
and Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Western champions, meet on a watery, muddy field in Varsity Stadium for the 1950 Canadian Football Championship. And as Mayor McCallum of Toronto gets things underway, here's Jack Wells from the original broadcast. By Ascot, and it's a short ball. It goes into the mud on the far side, taken by Ian Gibby, picks it up, and he is down. There's a pile of players. He was stopped by... Early in the first quarter, after a quick kick to Tommy Ford, it's Winnipeg's ball on the Argos 47. Was right. He cuts in, and he picks up about seven yards before he is thrown in a touch by Bud Fowler. Nick Volpe and Jacobs is in, semi-kick formation. Heads back, it's going to be a pass. Take plenty of time, it's a long one on the far side, and it's intercepted by the Argos. It's intercepted by Scott, and he is downed on his... by Stocks, Arnie Stocks, intercepted that pass. And the plan wide. First and ten. And it's Dexterville on a quarterback sneak, and he finds a big hole. He goes for five, he goes for ten yards, and he is downed on the 50-yard line. Too good is tossed for a five-yard loss by Tinsley next, and it's second down and 15 to go. Five 3D fans, and the pitch out on the far side to Curtis. He fades off to his right, and he's on the 45, he's on the 50, and he is pulled down on about the 55-yard line. Goes to a first down. And Joe Kroll is back to do the kicking. He's back in his own 46. There's the kick. And it's a soggy ball. It's coming down to Tommy Ford. Ford lets it roll to his 10. He's on the 10. He cuts into touch on about the 12. And it'll be first and 10 for the Bombers. And in motion to the left is Tommy Ford. And the handoff is to Johnny Strop. And there was no hole there by Fred, Fred Black. Moved in there to fill in. And there's no gain on the play. Volpe is dropping deep. And it's second and 10. There's the snap. There's the kick. It was almost blocked. And it's coming down in bomber territory. Rolls the 55. And Volpe has it. He moves right up the middle. And he is hit by Ian Gebb. And it's first and 10 for the Argos. The Argos go back into the huddle as Coach Frank Clare uses that two platoon system. The Argos gain two yards in two plays. And then... Crawl is back to do the kicking. Almost at midfield. There's the snap. And he gets the kick away. It's a nice spiral ball coming to Casey. Over his own goal line. He gets one away from Casey. And he concedes the point in the score. It's Toronto Argos one. Winnipeg Blue Bombers nothing. On Joe Kroll's long kick into the end zone. Three plays later, Toronto are on the move again. And it's Ulysses Curtis on a quarterback sneak. And I think he made it. Although the line held. Ulysses, uh, rather Al Dexterman on a quarterback sneak. Buddy Tinsley, captain, looks it over. And calls for the yard stick. And... It is first down for the Toronto Argos. First down for the Argos. And it's Dexterman. The handoff to Too Good on that similar plane. He finds the hole over left tackle. Goes for 5, 10, and 15. Again of about 17 yards. Ted Too Good cuts in over left tackle and finally stopped by Jim McPherson. And so the quarter ends. Toronto won, Winnipeg nothing. And after an exchange of kicks in the second quarter, here's broadcaster Wes McKnight. First down, Jack Jacobs looks around, sends a man in motion to the right. It's Tommy Ford. They have two men wide to the right in their spread formation. And it's Jacobs fading back for a pass, and it's over centered. It's good. He's coming up to the 30-yard line. Joe Aguirre. Jacobs gets it, and he is brought down for a loss as he turned around on the 25, and there may be a fumble. We'll see. The boy, he fumbled the ball, and Argonauts recovered. Westlake Caught with his defensive team on the field, Nectarbrun carried the ball for one yard on a quarterback sneak. Pitches out. And it is a plunge off tackle to the left by Ulysses Curtis. Took a pitch out from Dexter Brown. There's the snap to him. Stroll drops the ball, starts to run with it, and he's going down. He's down to the 25, down to the 20, down to the 15-yard line for Joe Kroll around the left end where he has sent it a touch. Dexter Brown running himself over to this side, and he can't get through. He is rolling a bit. And we'll see where they place the ball up. But again, the Argos are stopped, and they elect to try a field goal from the 21-yard line. And it is right through the center, good for three points. So Argonauts are out in front of this ball game now by a score of four to nothing. A kick by Joe Kroll. Two plays a later, a Winnipeg kick produces the game's most unusual moment. Line. Almost midway between the sidelines, the snap to him is good. He gets the kick away, and it's very high. Not too long. It's coming down here, and it hits the official right on the head. Cliff Roseborough, the Winnipeg official. Then, after an exchange of kicks, it's Toronto's first down on their own 45. He's back and gives it to Westlake. Westlake right through the center for a big game. He's still going, and he fumbled, and Winnipeg, they have recovered. Tommy Ford 
But Winnipeg failed again, and now it's Toronto's first down on their own 40. Dexterbon wipes off his hands on that towel that he's carrying with him, ready to get the ball. He does, and he gives a pitch out to Too Good running around the left end, gets away from one, a beautiful block there, and Too Good can't get away, he's away from the other one temporarily, down to the 45. The tacklers were sliding, and so was Too Good. They brought down all of them over on the far touch line. On Man in motion is Curtis to the right. Dexter Brown gives it on the handoff right through center. And Billy Bass still going down to the Winnipeg 45-yard line. Billy Bass, Ian Gibb made the tackle. Billy Bass cut through center on a quick opening play. Dexter Brown gives the handoff. And it's Bass again, and Bass goes down to the 37-yard line. Slides through that water and mud. Dexter Brown looks around. No man in motion. He gets the ball, gives it on a pitch back. This way to Curtis. Curtis trying to get away. He's brought down. He can't get away. The Winnipeg tacklers are around him. He's still struggling, but he is brought down on the 37. And a player is hurt over in that pool of water. We haven't as yet been able to identify the player for you. It may be Buddy Tinsley. It is Buddy Tinsley, powerful player for the Blue Bombers, one of their great linemen. He's limping. He's coming off with the aid of... The Winnipeg line stiffens, forcing Toronto to kick. And then... Second and six to go. Here's Jacobs on a quarterback sneak, and he finds a hole, but he fumbles, and Argonauts recover on the Winnipeg 19. A bad break. Dexterbun looks around, ready to get the ball from Hirsch. He does, and he gives it to... For a plunge, right through center. One man wide to the right. Jack Jacobs... Here come Argonauts. Dexter Brown gives it for running play to the left for Too Good. Too Good is brought down from behind on the 15-yard line. Too Good. Going to try this one. The ball is placed for him. Volpe kicks. And it is good. It's good. The second field goal for Nick Volpe. And Tommy Ford is still running, trying to get it out. He wasn't sure. Didn't see the signal, apparently. Tried to run it out, but he was running a touch at the far side. So the the half ended, Toronto seven, 7, Winnipeg nothing. Winnipeg and Jack Wells makes an observation. The old saying is you can't tell the players without a program doesn't apply today. The program wouldn't help you this afternoon because you just can't. Midway through the third quarter, Winnipeg succeeds where all others had failed this season. The ends are playing wide. There's the snap. There's a slow snap. And he, it's blocked. There's a match scramble for the ball. And it's the case of button, button. Who's got the button? Troll's kick has been blocked. And it's recovered. Two plays later, the shoe is on the other foot. Back on his own, 40-yard line to kick. McPhail is onside. Here's the snap. There's the kick, and it is blocked, and the ball is rolling wild. It drops down on the 15, 20-yard line. This is a mad scramble, and we can't tell who's got it yet. It's on the 20, and somebody's hurt on the play. Friend is going to run a play. Stretch Wiley is playing wide here at right end. And Dexterman may be setting up a pass, and it isn't. It's a handoff to Bass, Billy Bass, uh, over center for about five, going to the, going to the 15. Curtis in motion to the right. Dexterman back on a pass play, pass a run play, and he's electing to run. He's on the 15, and he goes to the 10, and it may be a first down. Dexterman on a pass or run play goes to the Bombers 10, and this may be a first down. It'll Curtis in motion to the left, playing wide. He's playing well out there, and they're going to run it. And the handoff is to Billy Bass, and Bass goes to the four-yard line before you stop. Maybe three. Billy Bass goes for the for a first down and to the Bombers, three. And this is the closest either club had been to scoring a touchdown this afternoon. And uh, hear that crowd going out. Dexterman looks over the situation. There it is. And the pitch out is to... Pitch out is to too good, and he is thrown for a loss on the play of about a yard. Dexterman calling the shots for the Argos. And uh, it's too good. Off tackle to his left this time. He's on the five, and he is spilled on about the two-yard line, right by the goal post, as he, tries, as he fights to try and get over that goal line. It'll be Argos, third, and about one yard. And this is the tense moment. This is possibly the big moment of the ball game now, because neither club have been this close to scoring a touchdown all afternoon. And the Argos are going to attempt to run this one yard. So here we go. Dexterman looks over his... Offense situation, and it's a quarterback sneak, and I do, he's over for a touchdown on a quarterback sneak. Nick Volpe will go after his convert. Volpe uh, has hardly missed, hardly ever missed. There's a snap, there's a kick, 
And it is no good. So the score remains 12 to nothing as Volpe misses that attempt convert. And the Toronto Argonauts are leading by a score of 12 to nothing in the third quarter. Argos kicking off. Les Asker kicking off, and there it goes. It's coming down here, where it's taken by Sokola. He's on the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. He's up to about the 35, the 40-yard line on the run back. Sokol, Andy Sokol, taking that kick off. Ian Gibb is in motion to the right, and Ford and Casey to the left, and Jacobs is back to pass. Here's the pass. It was almost intercepted. It is. And by, by Dechterburn, he is on the 25, and he is tackled on the 25. Dechterburn intercepts that pass on, the, on about the 40-yard line and runs it down to the... Bombers, 23. Dechterburn dropping back, and the handoff goes to t Billy to Teddy. Too good. Off tackle to the left and goes for close to a first down. Too good. Cuts inside. A gaping hole on the right side of the bomber line. Second and one. Handoff is to Too good. Too good. Fades to his left, and he's thrown for a loss by, Backer, by Ian Gibb. So Joe Kroll is back to kick. He's standing on about the bomber, 24-yard line. Playing in the safety is Tommy Ford. He's playing deep. Here's the snap and the kick. And there it goes into the end zone. It's coming down in front of Casey. Casey falls on it, concedes the point, and the score is... The third quarter ends, Toronto 13, Winnipeg nothing. And early in the fourth, Petro, who is easily recognized, replaces Jacobs. Waiting to get that ball, he gets he's fitting back for a pass. Back to his nine, tosses a long one down the field, and it's, it's a beautiful catch by Bud Korchak up on the 43-yard line. Beautiful pass to Bud Korchak. Got it on the 43-yard line. Here they come. Petro in the quarterback slot again. Waiting for that ball. He gets it. Gives it on handoff to George McPhail. And McPhail is going over the far side. He broke away. And he's going down the far side of the field. It's Byron carries after him down on the 35. And he's down on the 20-yard line. But there was a horn on the play. A beautiful run by George McPhail. Winnipeg lose on downs. But their line stiffens, forcing Toronto to kick after only a slight gain. Comes Don Knowles is back here in the safety spot. Here's the kick, and it is blo partially blocked. It's bounding around there, and Argonauts fall on the ball. That kick was blocked, and it went over the line of scrimmage, and Argonauts fell on it on the 30-yard line. No yards is the penalty, so the ball is marched down, still going down there to about the 14, 15-yard line. Yes, That's it's Winnipeg's, Winnipeg's ball, ball on the Toronto 15-yard line, and a great scoring chance. But Toronto stopped them on the 10, and then... 1950 Grey Cup Classic is over. There's the cheer from the 27,100 fans, most of whom stayed here right till the very finish. Fans are swarming onto that muddy gridiron. The goalposts are down at both ends, just cracking. The fans trying to get souvenirs of this 1950 Grey Cup game. They're battling for one goalpost. is standing up out of the four, and it is waving... And so, with that 13-0 victory... The Grey Cup and the Canadian Football Championship return to Toronto Argonauts after an absence of two years. In 24 Canadian championships played, Argos are the winners for the eighth time, with this one the greatest Grey Cup winner of them all. For in a coast-to-coast -coast Canadian press poll, the 1950 Argos were voted the outstanding football team of the half century.